Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing the adenylylcyclase protein kinase A pathway. Okay, right. So we've seen that so far everything has led to cyclic AMP going up in the cytoplasm. What we now want to discuss is how this is going to activate protein kinase A. Okay, and for this we're going to have to look at the structure of protein kinase A. Okay, so we are going to look at protein kinase A. Now, protein kinase A forms something known as a hollow enzyme. Okay, and uh, this basically means that protein kinase A is not um, made out of a single protein. Okay, instead it's made out of multiple proteins. So protein kinase A is what's known as a hollow enzyme, which means that it's got multiple proteins making up the entire thing. Okay, so it's going to have two uh, proteins which are known as regulatory subunits of protein kinase A, and two subunits that are known as the catalytic subunits of protein kinase A. Okay, so we're going to start by discussing the structure of the regulatory subunit of protein kinase A. Okay, right. So, basically, a regulatory subunit of protein kinase A is a protein. So, here's its amino terminus. Then the first domain that these regulatory subunits of protein kinase A have is something known as a docking and dimerization domain. Okay, and this is going to be important in dimerizing the two regulatory subunits of the protein kinase A hollow enzyme together. Okay, it's also going to be important in docking certain protein kinase A hollow enzymes to other proteins, which we'll come on to in a moment. Okay, so this is a docking and dimerization domain, and for short, the docking and dimerization is often abbreviated to D forward slash D. So we might call this a D forward slash D domain, which just stands for docking and dimerization, basically. Okay, so let's colour in the docking and dimerization domain in turquoise here. Okay, right. The next important domain is going to be a protein kinase A inhibitor site. Okay, so we'll have this in purple. So this is a protein kinase A inhibitor site, and this is going to be involved in inhibiting the uh, catalytic subunits of protein kinase A. Okay, so this is a PKA for protein kinase A, and then it's an inhibitor site. Okay, next up then, after the protein kinase A inhibitor site, you have two uh, cyclic AMP binding domains which are in tandem. And all in tandem means is it means that they are next to each other, one follows the other. Okay, so here we have our two in tandem um, cyclic AMP binding domains. Okay, so these are the two cyclic AMP binding domains. So these little sort of invaginations I've drawn here, these are the sites where cyclic AMP will bind. Okay, right, but the entire domain is called the cyclic AMP binding domain, and we've got two of them. So overall, each regulatory subunit of protein kinase A is capable of binding two cyclic AMP molecules. Right, okay, so here they are now in blue. Right, okay, so this subunit that I have drawn here, this is just one of the proteins that makes up a protein kinase A holoenzyme. This is called a regulatory subunit of protein kinase A. Okay, right. What's going to happen is two regulatory subunits of protein kinase A are going to dimerize together, and they're going to dimerize together through their docking and dimerization domain. So let me now draw another regulatory subunit here. Okay, so to form a protein kinase A holoenzyme, you take two regulatory subunits of protein kinase A, you bind them together via their docking and dimerization domains, and this then is called a regulatory subunit of protein kinase A dimer. Okay, so here are the two cyclic AMP binding domains down here, and here's our carboxylic acid terminus. Okay, so let's just colour everything in. So here is our docking and dimerization domain on our second regulatory subunit of protein kinase A. Here is our protein kinase A inhibitor site on our second regulatory subunit of protein kinase A. And here 
is our cyclic AMP binding uh, domain, um, well, one of them, and here is our second cyclic AMP binding domain on this second regulatory subunit of protein kinase A. Okay, right. So here are the two regulatory subunits. Now, before we move on to the catalytic subunits to complete the protein kinase A hollow enzyme, I want to tell you about the different types of regulatory subunits. So basically, what would be really simple is if there was just one type of regulatory subunit, and it was called the regulatory subunit of protein kinase A, okay, but it's not the case. There are actually four different types of regulatory subunits of protein kinase A, and these are grouped into two families, okay? So there are what are known as type 1 regulatory subunits, known as R1 subunits, and then there are also R2 subunits, type 2 regulatory subunits, okay? So this is type 2, okay, and this is type 1. Now, in each of these families of regulatory subunits, there are two members. So, in R1, for instance, you have the uh, type 1 regulatory subunit of protein kinase A alpha, which is a specific protein, okay, and then you also have the type 1 regulatory subunit of protein kinase A beta. Similarly, in the type 2 regulatory subunit, uh, of protein kinase A family, you have R2 alpha, okay, and you, then you also have R2 beta, which gives you overall four different regulatory subunits. Now, basically, if you build, well, if you're going to build a protein kinase A hollow enzyme, you need two regulatory subunits. You need to dimerize them together like so, okay? you have to pick your two regulatory subunits from one of these families. So you either make a protein kinase A hollow enzyme which has got type 1 regulatory subunits, or you make a protein kinase A hollow enzyme which has type 2 regulatory subunits. If your protein kinase A hollow enzyme has type 1 regulatory subunits, then it is known as a type 1 protein kinase A hollow enzyme. So this will make us a type 1 protein kinase A hollow enzyme. If you use two, um, oh no, not homo, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself, we'll come to that, hollow enzyme, okay, um, that will make you a type 1 protein kinase A hollow enzyme if you use type 1 regulatory subunits to build your hollow enzyme. If you use type 2 regulatory subunits to build your protein kinase A hollow enzyme, then it will give you what's known as a type 2 protein kinase A hollow enzyme. Okay, right. Uh, so, the next thing that needs to be discussed is whether when creating a dimer like this, you have to use two of the exact same regulatory subunits, or whether you can mix and match between the families. Okay, so in the case of type 1 uh, regulatory subunits, you can actually form both sorry, homodimers and heterodimers. Okay, so what do I mean by this? When you are building a protein kinase A hollow enzyme, you have to take two regulatory subunits of protein kinase A and dimerize them together. Okay, I've already told you that you can't mix them between these two families. So the question then remains, can you mix them within the families? Well, in the case of type 1, you can. So if you want to make a type 1 protein kinase A hollow enzyme, then you need to start by using type 1 regulatory subunits. You can either use type 1 regulatory subunit alpha twice, so both of these will be a type 1 regulatory subunit alpha um, protein, or you could use R1B type, uh, twice rather. So you could use an R1B here and an R1 beta here. Okay, those two examples will be homodimers. However, you can also form a heterodimer, which is where you have uh, one R1 alpha here and one R1 beta here. Okay, so you use different type 1 uh, regulatory subunits uh, to build your uh, regulatory subunit dimer, which is going to go into your hollow enzyme. In the case of type 2, uh, protein kinase A hollow enzymes. The regulatory subunit dimer has to be built out of two identical type 2 regulatory subunits. So we have only found homodimers so far. 
Now, I'll revise that in a moment once we've seen the full protein kinase A holoenzyme. Okay, right. So, the next uh, proteins that you have to add in to make the full protein kinase A holoenzyme is you have to put in two catalytic subunits. Okay, and these again are separate proteins. So these two blobs that I'm now just putting a C in, these are separate proteins and they are called the catalytic uh, subunit of protein kinase A. Okay, so to make a protein kinase A holoenzyme, you need two catalytic subunits and you need two regulatory subunits. You dimerize the two regulatory subunits together and you then attach these two catalytic subunits onto the protein kinase A inhibitor sites of the two regulatory subunits that are together. And this structure now is called the protein kinase A holoenzyme. Okay, now, again, it would be really simple if there was just one catalytic subunit of protein kinase A, but it's not the case. There are three. There's the catalytic subunit alpha, there's the catalytic subunit beta, and there's the catalytic subunit gamma. Okay, so now let's go over everything. If you want to build a protein kinase A holoenzyme, the first thing you have to decide is what sort of regulatory subunits you are going to use. Are you going to go down the type 1 route or are you going to go down the type 2 route? And we'll see the significance of this in just a moment. Okay, so you choose which type you want to use, type 1 or type 2. Let's say you decide on type 1. Okay, that means that you can now uh, use either the R1 alpha or the R1 beta as your regulatory subunits. Okay, and you can either put two R1 alphas together to make an R1 alpha homodimer, you could put two R1 betas together to make an R1 beta homodimer, or you could put one R1 alpha with one R1 beta to make a heterodimer. All of those will be plausible regulatory subunit dimers to build a protein kinase A holoenzyme. If you decide to go down the type 2 route, you again have two regulatory subunits you can use, but you can only form homodimers. So you can form um, an R2-alpha homodimer, where both of these proteins are identical R2-alpha proteins, or you can form an R2-beta uh, homodimer, where both of these two proteins are identical R2-beta proteins. After you've built your regulatory subunit dimer, you then have to decide on the catalytic subunits that you're going to use here. And you've got three to choose from. You've got a catalytic subunit alpha, a catalytic subunit beta, and a catalytic subunit gamma. That now creates you the uh, full protein kinase A holoenzyme. Okay, and this is currently the inactive protein kinase A. This is the form that protein kinase A exists in within your cy the cytoplasm of your cells. What we'll see in the next video is, firstly, what's the difference between type 1 protein kinase A and type 2 protein kinase A holoenzymes, i.e. what's the significance of having re your regulatory subunit dimer built out of these two separate families. Okay, then what we'll move on to is the activation of the protein kinase A holoenzyme, and then once it's activated, what it's actually going to do.